Today, we're going to talk about a very fascinating relationship between vitamin D and zinc. The majority of the population on this planet has a vitamin D deficiency. But what many don't realize is that the importance of having enough zinc to allow vitamin D to work. Let's just pretend this is the receptor and uh, you also have zinc. So in order for this receptor to receive vitamin D, you need zinc, okay? Zinc is essential. If you have a deficiency of zinc, the vitamin D receptor will not accept vitamin D. So many people don't just have a vitamin D deficiency, they also have a zinc deficiency. So let's just talk a little bit more about zinc. Zinc is the second most abundant trace mineral on this planet. And the first one is iron. So zinc is really important, not just for vitamin D, but for about 2,800 different proteins. And if you're deficient in zinc, you can pretty much predict the person's gonna have a vitamin D deficiency. And so if you're exhibiting certain vitamin D deficiencies, let's say, for example, your immune system is weak or you have low back pain or you're depressed or you have high blood pressure, and you're taking vitamin D, yet you really need zinc, then vitamin D is just not going to work. So what does a zinc deficiency look like? Well, they can lose their taste or their smell. They can have low testosterone. Uh, they can have problems with diarrhea. They can have problems with alopecia where they lose their hair. They can have various inflammatory problems with their skin. They can have vision problems, even develop an ulcer. This is why zinc is really good for digestive ulcers as well as inflammation. But another really important function with zinc is the immune system, right? So if you're deficient in zinc, you're very susceptible to having problems with infections and viruses invading the body. If your zinc is really, really low, you can even develop what's called uh, thymus atrophy, where the thymus gland, which is a gland right on top of your heart, it's a training camp for your T cells, your immune cells. And so without enough zinc, that thing shrinks, it becomes atrophy. So both zinc and vitamin D are really, really important for the immune system. Even inside your immune system, there are receptors for both zinc and vitamin D. So in other words, there's different parts of your body that can activate vitamin D from the inactive to the active form. Well, your immune system also does it as well. It'll take the inactive vitamin D and convert it into the active vitamin D with the help of zinc. And that active form of vitamin D is so important in the immune system. It not only moderates or controls or manages the immune system, but it also protects like overreactions of the immune system, like a cytokine storm, an anaphylactic shock, something that's out of control. Vitamin D is also important in regulating whether someone develops an autoimmune disease or not. You even have the transformation from a, a monocyte to a macrophage, which the macrophages are basically just bigger immune cells like Pac-Man go in there and start eating up bacteria. In order for a monocyte to convert into a macrophage, you need this active form of vitamin D, which is dependent on zinc. Now, yes, you can take a supplement with zinc. Just make sure you also have some copper in there. You have the right balance and you have other trace minerals. But let me just kind of go through the foods that are high in zinc. Oysters, lobster, shrimp, liver, as well as red meat, which is interesting because if you look at all the different organs that zinc is stored in, your muscle is at the top of the list. Nearly 50% of all the zinc in your body is stored in your muscles. So when you eat animal muscle protein, you can get a really good source of zinc. Now, let's talk about what can cause a zinc deficiency, okay? Well, number one, it's not consuming things high in zinc. Uh, number two, it's phytates. Phytates is a chemical in grains, it's in legumes which tend to bind and block the absorption of certain minerals, including zinc. And this is why many, many children in different parts of the world, um, because they're consuming cereal as their main calories, and they develop a lot of problems, especially with diarrhea, which is very dangerous because you could die. When you have chronic diarrhea, you can lose all your minerals, especially the electrolytes to the heart. And as a side note, um, zinc is one of the most common deficiencies in pregnancy. So it's so important for a pregnant woman to eat healthy and have a variety of foods, not necessarily to do intermittent fasting or anything like that. But eat a, the healthy version of the ketogenic diet, which includes a lot of animal protein, fish, things like that. There's another condition called sickle cell anemia, which has, has a lot of complications, a lot of problems. But if the person is taking zinc, they have a lot less complications. Apparently in sickle cell anemia, the person is usually always deficient in zinc. 
there's a higher zinc demand and there's more zinc being excreted through the urine. Remember, zinc is involved in 2,800 different proteins throughout the body. So as you can see, the importance of zinc in preventing a vitamin D deficiency. And on top of that, vitamin D also allows zinc to be transported through the body. So they're both dependent on each other. And zinc is also important for other vitamins too, like the receptor for vitamin A and also the receptor for cortisol, which is the stress hormone. In another video, I talked about the importance of magnesium with vitamin D. If you have not seen that video, very important. I put that up right here. Check it out. Today, I want to talk about vitamin D and a magnesium deficiency. There's a very interesting relationship between vitamin D and magnesium that I think you should know about, especially since most of the population is deficient in both vitamin D and magnesium. I think it's 75% of the population has low vitamin D levels and 45% has low magnesium levels. And here's what you need to know. All of the enzymes involving the conversion of vitamin D to the active form of vitamin D are magnesium dependent. That means if you're completely zero with magnesium, vitamin D will not work, period. And we know how important vitamin D is for bone, for bone pain, for insulin resistance, for your immune system, to prevent muscle cramps, cardiovascular problems with blood pressure and fatigue. So magnesium allows vitamin D to work and vitamin D also allows magnesium to be absorbed by a factor of 30%. So they're both synergistically helping each other. Now there's another mineral involved and it's calcium. If you're low in magnesium, you're gonna have problems with that calcium because not only does vitamin D help the absorption of calcium by 20% in your gut, but magnesium also helps regulate calcium. Magnesium helps prevent calcium from building up inside your arteries. Magnesium is really good for blood pressure and just having elastic arteries to adapt to exercise and bounce back from stress, things like that. And it helps lower cortisol and it will help you sleep. So there's a certain ratio of calcium to magnesium that someone needs. And roughly you need like twice as much calcium as magnesium. But nowadays this ratio is really like three times as much calcium as magnesium. And the simple solution is to increase your magnesium. But the problem is, how do you do that? Because the average person only consumes like one and a half cups of salad per day. It's not even probably the dark leafy greens that's high in magnesium. And also like, I think it's 83% of all the calories in the grocery store are ultra processed. And that's another way that people are deficient in magnesium because our foods are just stripped of all the magnesium. And when we have this increase in calcium to a magnesium, then we start getting you know, calcification of the arteries. It even can increase the risk of different types of cancer, prostate, colorectal. It can increase polyps, which potentially could end up going into a cancer state. So I just wanted to put this on your radar to make sure you're having enough of magnesium to allow vitamin D to work. But also don't forget about vitamin D, you need that as well. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side. And if you have not seen my very popular video I just released on magnesium that will give you a lot more information, I put that video up right here. Check it out.